Hi there, I'm Adam Fairclough, professional HDR nerd and unprofessional video conference attendee. Apologies for the sound and the video quality and my hair. Um, I'm just in the middle of doing some decorating at home, but some news hit today, um, which kind of made me want to do a video that I've been kind of holding on to for a little bit. So we're just going to put together a, a little bit of quick information about um, the Xbox Series X and some of its new HDR related features. Today, Xbox released a little bit of additional information about the impressive backwards compatibility options of the upcoming Xbox Series X. Amongst promises of games having their frame rates doubled, 60 to 120 frames a second, resolution increases, up to 4K and above, other visual enhancements, all across three generations of Xbox consoles, one feature really stood out of interest to me since it was announced a couple of months back, and this is Microsoft's Auto HDR reconstruction. At a platform level, the new machine is going to be able to take uh, an older game that doesn't have HDR and add an HDR sheen to it. They demoed it to a few outlets a little while ago using my luminance heat map technique, and the results were reported to be pretty convincing. So today I thought I'd share a little bit more with you based upon what I know from speaking to developers at Xbox and from Jason Ronald, the Director of Program Management at Xbox. First off, how have they done this? Microsoft's ATG, uh, the Advanced Technology Group, have been working on this for a few years, and I was fortunate enough to be able to speak to Mike Rayner, Colin Penty, and David Lucas from The Coalition, who developed Gears of War 5. And when speaking about Gears of War 5, they told me, we are very proud of our HDR implementation for Gears 5. We use machine learning to train an inverse tone mapper for color space conversion. So what does this mean? Basically, the coalition, in conjunction with ATG, created an AI to help convert their internal engine output, which was primarily sRGB, but with a much larger dynamic range, to function better on modern HDR displays. This HDR was fed pairs of images of various Xbox-capable games. So we'd have one in HDR and one in SDR. The same frame of the same game, both being rendered using that game's own tone mapper for HDR and SDR. And they'd feed this to the AI, and the AI would look at the two images and work out what the difference between those two images was. So they would feed this AI countless pairs from various different games, and over time the AI learned to be able to understand what the difference was very broadly across any two pairs of images. How are the colours different and how is the tone mapping different? This AI is what is called an inverse tone mapper. You take a compressed low dynamic range image and you inverse the tone mapping to expand it back to its original form. So we can take the Rec 7 and 9 colour gamut and expand it outwards to match uh, the bigger original WCG image. Now once you've got an AI that can undo the tone mapping from an SDR image, this means you can also flip it around and remap it back down to a different output. And in this case, it would have been an HDR10 output. And if you've played Gears of War 5, the results are really good. So that is a combination of this technology to make their internal output better, but combining it with a, a human tuned and human kind of graded output. And they talked about this a little bit. They said that they blended this with the Reinhard HDR buffer and they did a lot of tuning uh, of the resulting image to get the best optimal visual results. So for the Xbox Series X, Microsoft took these learnings and went even further. Now, unlike a DVD or a Blu-ray, which are hard-coded to 8-bit, video games internally work at 10-bit, 11-bit, 12-bit, maybe even as high as 32-bit as depths. But for the sake of getting it to your TV in a recognised format, that this output is, is restricted. So trying to apply an inverse tone mapper to a piece of 8-bit SDR content would leave us with a tonne of banding and posterization. And this might be something you've seen if you've activated the HDR effect or the HDR simulation mode that your TV has. And then that often comes with a whole load of latency as it does that processing as well. Xbox Series X, however, can tap straight into the original data within the game itself and apply its inverse tone mapper, its colour space expansion and its HDR10 tone mapping to this high bit depth image. Not in software, as it happened in Gears, but directly within the display controller of the Xbox Series X GPU, meaning it can actually obtain a native 10 bit or maybe even higher output with no latency or lag. And this is something that is strictly impossible to do 
uh, on a display. It's really clever stuff. Now, what does this mean for us? This is going to give older games a newer sheen. Gears 5, of course, is one of the benchmark HDR titles, and clearly Microsoft's and Xbox's R&D capabilities to de help deliver this are mind-blowing. The result looked incredible. But I think if you want to see what I suspect are probably some of the earlier experiments into this auto HDR, then you probably need to look no further than some of the Xbox 360 games that were given an HDR makeover as part of the Xbox One's backwards compatibility program. Both Mirror's Edge and Halo 3 both look like they've been made in HDR and in many games look better than some titles actually have been. Now, there's no doubt some limitations to this technique, but the results so far clearly show it's a great option to have. So it's all shaping up to look super promising as an option to take off some of the flatness um, that I now see when I don't get to enjoy games in HDR. I'm really looking forward to taking a look at some things like Alien, Isolation, Prey, Titanfall 2, Dishonored 2, all beautiful looking games that didn't make it in time to have HDR um, added into them. So I hope you found this video interesting. Please hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more video game related content. Thanks and goodbye. Adam.